As the influence of vintage-inspired designs have taken the industry by storm in recent years, a wave of excellent chronographs with heritage influence have also been introduced by brands both big and small. And in this video, I'm gonna share some of my top picks for chronographs that have more of this heritage type of angle at a wide range of price points. Now we have well over a dozen watches that we're going to be looking at here, but if you want even more picks, I will have a link in the description to our top chronographs article down below. This also expands beyond the genre that we're looking at here today, which is more specifically that heritage, vintage inspired type of chronograph design. There's much more out there. I would say most people when they associate a chronograph are thinking about sportier options. So a wide range there. So I'll link to that down below. And also if you're looking for something, say under a thousand dollars while you're over at teddybaldesser.com uh, for a chronograph, it's a great just do it all piece. Maybe the best under $700 out there I would go with the Seiko Speed Timer. So you have two different dial variations that we have available. We have the Panda version, which typically is the one that people often will go for more, but then you also have the black dial version as well. Seiko course movement on the inside, but it does have a sweeping type of secondhand effect. Very wearable with its case size. You're talking about under 40 millimeters, but wears even smaller than that. Uh, wears honestly like a 38 and a half on the wrist and a classic style and design while integrating those solar cells within the sub registers that are hard to detect until you look very closely. Great value package, one of the winners from Seiko in the last few years without question. We'll also have a link to that in the description down below as well. So for our first watch here, we actually have a mechanical watch as our most affordable piece that we're gonna be looking at, and that is the Seagull 1963. Now this watch has really become famous as a result of the movement on the inside, the Seagull ST19. This looks back to a Swiss movement that this was going to be based off of, known as a Venus movement, where a factory in China was then getting the access to the parts to manufacture these movements. But why it's so special is the fact that it does look the part, but you're talking about a column wheel chronograph under $500. If you're going to find a Swiss equivalent to this, you're talking about typically in the $3,000 range to start seeing this become available. 38 millimeter case, 46.8 millimeters with that lug to lug, water resistance of 30 meters, acrylic crystal to stay with the times of the 1960s. It's a polarizing watch for some, but for those that just want to get the access to a mechanical chronograph caliber at the most obtainable price, this is one that has a reputation of being a leader in that realm. Now, when many think of Bulova chronographs, I think they automatically shift over to looking at the Bulova Lunar Pilot. But when going to the angle of more heritage inspired, vintage inspired, I would look at the Bulova Chrono A. And these are fantastic looking watches. They wear well on the wrist. I'm surprised more people don't look at these more and more. Now you're looking at a watch that's going to retail around $695, 40.5 millimeter case. So very wearable on wrist. You're talking about a lug to lug dimension of 46.5 millimeters to go along with that. Thickness is going to be a tad thicker than you probably would want. But with that, you're also getting 200 meters of water resistance. So this is a sporty chronograph. This is commonly referred to as their surfboard style chronographs uh, with that that central display that's going to have that contrasting effect that emulates the shape of a surfboard. High performance course movement on the inside, that's one of the best aspects of these watches, also getting that sweeping secondhand function. So if you want that mechanical look without having to necessarily pay the price for it, this is a great middle ground and sapphire crystal on top. So now I want to take a quick excursion off the traditional mainstream path and then look at maybe some more micro oriented brands. So like micro brands that are just doing a great job. And I would say this whole genre of watchmaking is one that does this chronograph segment quite well. The first one here is the Brew Retrograph. Now this is a brand that has ascended quite a bit in the past several years. In the last year, I talked about the Brew Metric and that thing, I, it's crazy. I just, people absolutely love that watch and for good reason. I think the one thing that Brew does exceptionally well is trying to figure out how can they separate from the competition in the price range. And when you're looking to differentiate under $500, it's hard to do. Much of this is going to be tied to the movement. So you really have to fixate on the design in the case. And this is what Brew does very well. It's not as inspired as some of the other designs that you're going to find out there. Not to say that it's unlike anything we've ever seen before, but much more just novel in its approach. $375 here for this retrograph, which I think is a remarkable price for what you're getting. 38 by 41 and a half millimeters with the case size. It has more of that TV style shape in its uh, practice here of its case. Thickness of 10.4 millimeters, mecha course movement on the inside, 50 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and a wide variety of dial colors to choose from. 
Now I wanna shift into two brands that are actually founded by the same founder. I actually looked at both of these watches side by side last year, so I can link to the uh, video down below in the description. But first we have Nevada Grenchen with their Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver. So that's a mouthful to begin with, but it does describe what this watch is all about. Basically taking the fundamental characteristics of these different pillars of watchmaking and trying to infuse it all in one package. So Nevada Grenchen was officially established in 1926 and created a name for itself throughout the 1950s and 60s thanks to models like the Buccaneer, the Aquamatic, and the Wanderer. Unveiled in the early 1960s, they then unveiled this Chronomaster collection paired with hand-winding third-party chronograph calibers with a sporty case and rotating bezel, giving us this aviator sea diver that we have here. So this is essentially a one-to-one -one of those original watches. And I think a big reason and draw for why people are interested in these watches is going to be their more uh, different style and approach. You're talking about a 38.5 millimeter case size thickness, despite having a manual Salita chronograph caliber. This is an integrated movement for a chronograph. 13.7 millimeters. So the wearability on wrist when factoring in with that 46.4 millimeters on the lug to lug is simply phenomenal. Shifting right along, you have Excelsior Park on the other hand that dates all the way back to 1866. Not as well known, but they do have a history of producing stopwatches as well as chronograph movements for the likes of Gerard Perigo, Galet, and even Zenith of all brands. So this is the one of these two that was more to my taste and was one of the biggest surprises from the microsphere last year. 39 millimeters with the case size, thickness of 13.1 millimeters, lug to lug of 47.2 millimeters, so wearing pretty true to a 39 to 40 millimeter case, very wearable all things considered, 100 meters of water resistance despite the more elegant profile, and a manual SW510 movement on the inside. And then one final micro that I'll throw in here is going to be Baltic, French micro brand, started back in 2017, and they've just essentially been on a roll ever since their genesis. We're talking about a price right around $1,600, $1,700, case size of 39.5 millimeters, thickness of 13.1 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, water resistance of 50 meters. We are seeing that familiar manual SW510 on the inside here. So Baltic has developed a reputation for a lot of this heritage style and the designs. Look at their Aquascaf, look at some of their dress oriented pieces, even their bi-compacts chronograph that we've seen in the past. This now extends it up, gets into a Swiss caliber. And all in all, I think Baltic has just developed a great reputation for just delivering on both value as well as design. All their designs are tasteful and ultimately pretty inefficient across the market. So when you were looking at Hamilton, they had to be on this list. I think they have a couple options that you could consider here. You could look at the Pilot Pioneer Mechanical Chronograph. That's the newer release for 2022, more to the aviation style of things. But I would say the one that more people are probably going to associate with Hamilton is going to be the Chrono H, the Intramatic family of watches in that chronograph configuration. These watches are just definitive leaders around $2,000 for a Swiss made mechanical chronograph. So you're talking about right around $2,100, 40 millimeter case size, thickness of 14.1 millimeters, lug to lug of 48.9 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters. Then you also have that Valjoux 7753 modified base, has a slightly extended power reserve in the process of 60 hours. These are going to emulate much of the chronomatics of the 1960s, 1970s era of Hamilton. This was a big time for the progression of automatic chrono Chronographs. I actually reviewed these watches in full detail when they were unveiled in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So if you wanna check out that video, I can also link to it down below. Some of the fixtures within this $2,000 segment for just any watch, let alone chronographs. So for our next watch here, we have the Tissot Telemeter 1938. So this is a watch that leans into that 1930s styling telemeter style and approach, which a telemeter is a chronograph scale that allows you to measure a event that can both be seen and heard. It was used commonly during the period that this one is pulling from to see how far a enemy was by seeing artillery fire. Seeing the flash, hearing the sound, that would give an indication of how far away your enemy was. You can also utilize this for lightning to see how far away it is from where you specifically are at. So actually a pretty interesting scale, but this really leans into that classic 1930s design from Tissot's archive 
42 millimeter case, which is probably the biggest qualm that people are going to have with this style. It's just the fact that it is going to lean into this vintage heritage inspired design, but it is going to be larger in terms of its case profile. 13.85 millimeters in thickness. So pretty slender there. It's not something that necessarily would struggle to get underneath certain dress cuffs. 50 millimeters for the lug to lug dimension, water resistance of 30 meters, and giving you a fully integrated value caliber on the inside. With two different dial variations to choose from, you have a silver dial with more conventional markers and then you have the gilt version with the black kind of glossy surface. Both of them are striking. The black one, I think, does have a tad more pop in terms of leaning into this era. So it just kind of depends on what you want to go for. So next up, we have one of my favorites on the list. We have the Zin 356. So this is available in some different dial color variations. You also get the acrylic version with the crystal. You also will have some options with sapphire uh, for both the front and back crystal. This brand was founded by a flight instructor named Helmut Zinn back in 1961. So even since their genesis, Zinn was a brand that understood the task at hand when producing their watches and haven't deviated from this vision since. In terms of what you're getting here, the classic utilitarian, no-nonsense approach from Zen is also within this piece. 38.5 millimeters with the case size. There is a larger variant as well, closer to 40 millimeters that you can go for. Thickness of 15.5 millimeters, lug to lug of 46 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, and an automatic Salita SW500 on the inside. When you're looking at chronographs around $3,000, one of the leading brands there has to be Longines. Here is a newer creation from the brand with the Record Heritage Chronograph. I do wanna mention that there is going to be a wide range of Longines chronographs you could also look at here. I mentioned the Avigation Big Eye, which are some of my personal favorites, but let's get some new blood into the conversation. Now, the Record Collection is commonly being associated with some of these COSC certified movements that they're throwing inside of their watches and taking a more traditional look at their watchmaking. Now take this concept and infuse it with a 1940s chronograph design and you have the Longines Record Heritage Chronograph. Inside here, you are going to have the L895. This is actually a four hertz uh, beat frequency movement. There's a lot of times they're going to be using a 3.5 hertz movement. This is going to reduce the power reserve in this instance to 59 hours, still suitable for staying on par with a lot of the competition here, but also coming with a COSC certification. This one also in terms of wearability, quite well done, 40 millimeters, so pretty mass appealing, 13.8 millimeters on the thickness and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters. There have been many hits from Tudor over the last five years, but one towards the top of the heap has to be the new Tudor Black Bay Chrono that was unveiled in 2021. Now these watches were special for a few reasons. Number one, where they sat in the market for a luxury chronograph was quite competitive. You're talking about $5,000 to get into these watches, but the looks as well, of course, there's going to be some association with the Rolex Daytona. Given the idea that those have become almost unobtainable for many people out there, this makes this watch even that much more compelling. But beyond just looking at the aesthetics, the watch from a technical perspective is also incredible. You're talking about a B01 base caliber on the inside, which uh, was going to be an exchange of technologies with Breitling that they utilized uh, different movements from one another. The B01 is typically put in watches that are more in the range of $7,000 to $10,000. So to find it in a watch that's around $5,000 is going to be class leading for this movement. 41 millimeter case going to wear pretty true to that size, if not slightly larger with the 49.8 millimeter lug to lug, but still relatively wearable because they were able to slim down the thickness of this case by moving the dial closer to the crystal. So 14.2 millimeters with that thickness, 200 meters of water resistance with screw down pushers. So you have some nice versatility and not deviating far from the Black Bay DNA that has the name associated with this model. We also did just recently see some S&G versions that were unveiled as well. So depending if you wanna go in that route, is going to extend up the price, but you are getting some more options now than you did previously. When a design style works, I think it's good that you don't try to reinvent the wheel. And that is very much the case with the Omega Speedmaster 57. These were newly updated for 2022, wide variety of different dial colors to choose from, really paying homage to the original Speedmaster reference, looking at the 2915. We have the broad arrow hand design, slimmer profile at 12 millimeters, case size of 40.5 millimeters, and getting the master chronometer certified manual caliber, coaxial caliber, 
with the 9906 available with that exhibition case back and filling up a good portion of that case back certainly looks the part. Now we have one of my favorite, I wouldn't even say it's a secret anymore, but one of my favorite independent brands under $10,000, we have Habring 2 with their Chrono Felix. So I've actually reviewed this model in full detail on the channel. I'll link to that in the description down below if you're interested in learning more about this brand and this watch. Although it is not an inexpensive watch, I do think it's delivering something that's pretty unique where you can actually connect with the makers of this piece. So just a little bit of backstory about Habring. They're an Austrian-based brand run by a couple, Richard and Maria Habring. And Richard was responsible for a great contribution to watchmaking in his time as a watchmaker at IWC by developing the Doppel chronograph using a module on the Value 7750 in 1992, first being unveiled in the reference 3711. Following his time at IWC, he moved over to Langa before going into business for himself in 2000. Four. This is a mono pusher chronograph at 38.5 millimeters with this beautiful salmon type of copper dial that I just think looks beautiful. Also, it utilizes a movement on the inside known as the A11CH1, which is gonna utilize much of uh, Richard's background in developing and really kind of reworking some of these value calibers to his own spec. And one thing I really like about this company is if you are showing interest in one of their pieces, certainly slower production, but you could just call their line typically and they might pick up and they, you might be talking to either Richard or Maria uh, if you are inquiring about getting one of their pieces made for you. So very well done brand. I like their designs. I like their classic approach to watchmaking and one that I think it needs to be mentioned in a list like this if you want something different under $10,000. Next, we have the Zenith Chronomaster Original. We're gonna look here at the reverse Panda version. So this is a model that has now become available in stainless steel, standard production, and I could not be happier about it. I love the look of this watch. I think this is presenting one of the most wearable types of chronographs that you're going to find with a fully integrated chronograph movement with the amount of history that this model has that you're going to find anywhere under $10,000. This is the A386 style of case, so 38 millimeters, lug to lug of around 46 to 47 millimeters, right in that sweet spot. And also I think a huge thing here is going to be the thickness, 12.7 millimeters. Even looking back at some of those manual wound chronographs that we were looking at previously on this list, you're talking about 12.7 millimeters for an automatic chronograph. 50 meters in water resistance and movement on the inside is the automatic El Primero 3600, uh, utilizing that El Primero DNA, but now infusing the, on top of the five Hertz that is conventional for these movements with the 10th of a second indication with that central chronograph second hand. Is it potentially not really that useful? Yeah, but who cares? I think it looks sweet when you get to see that second hand just moving around at a blistering pace around that central point of the dial. Next we have Breitling here and we have one of my favorite releases from their contemporary catalog with the Breitling Premier B09. So this is a watch that is maybe overlooked by some just because so many naturally will go to the uh, common fixtures that many will associate with Breitling. Look at the Navitimer, even the Chronomat. That is more of an indie style and pick, but it is more definitive Breitling. And I think people will look at that bracelet and just be like, okay, yeah, that's a Breitling watch. The Premier is understated. It's heritage inspired. But the history of the Premier line actually goes back to 1943, a full decade before the Navitimer even existed. So there's plenty of history here when you're looking within Breitling's collection. This watch though, to me, the reason why it's so special is going to be one, wearability, but really most importantly, the dial is just simply spectacular. 40 millimeter case, 13 millimeters in the thickness and a 47.3 millimeter lug to lug dimension. You're looking at 100 meters of water resistance and then a movement on the inside with the B09. The way they describe this green dial is pistachio green and I could not think of a better descriptor for this color and shade of green. There's nothing really else like it and I just think it looks amazing with this conventional chronograph display, simply beautiful. Now for our next watch here, we have the Breguet Type 20. 3800 ST. So when people think of Breguet, they think of a high horology brand. And when they think of Breguet, I would imagine most people associate some of their fundamentals when it comes to high horology watchmaking, the tourbillon, you're looking at the Breguet overcoil, uh, their fundamentals and chronographs. But you're probably not thinking about maybe a mid 20th century military chronograph that also is available under $10,000. And I don't think many people even consider that that's the case for Breguet, that they even have watches available 
in this price range. But that's why I think the Type 20 is pretty special. This watch specifically stems from a 1954 French military watch where Breguet was one of the few select brands that produce a timepiece for the French Air Force. This is one of the prime examples of classic Breguet making its way into the contemporary collection, especially on the sportier side of things that I think people often will overlook in general for Breguet. 39 millimeters with the case size, so relatively wearable with that 47.3 millimeter lug to lug dimension. Water resistance of a very suitable 100 meters. This is a watch with military history, so having multifunctionality is of course important. You have the automatic Breguet 582 movement on the inside. This is based off of the Lamania 1350 movement. And simply put, a sleeper from Breguet that is a hallmark of their 1950s design style with of course military inspiration. And for our final watch on the list here, one of my favorites out there from the chronograph category uh, for this heritage style and design, we have the Longa 1815 chronograph. This watch is simply spectacular. I think many people, when they think of chronographs from Longa, they're commonly going to associate the datagraph with the brand. Uh, but this is one for me is probably where I would personally go because I get the upside of one of their most beautiful movements while looking at a design and wearability factor that I think is going to be very appealing for many people out there. Now, the name of this collection is paying homage to the birth year of the founder of the brand, Ferdinand Adolf Longa. And with this affiliation, it unquestionably exalts many of the elements of classic watchmaking. It utilizes the famous movement, the L951, a movement that was famous for its visual and technical masterclass being first unveiled within the original Longa datagraph from 1999. But comparing this to the datagraph up down, this is a way more restrained, dressy example and is a nice option for those that are not drawn to the more imposing elements of Longa's design DNA. But all right, guys, that is my list here today looking at some heritage inspired chronographs. I love this genre of chronograph. I think it's just timeless as can be. And if you are looking at a chronograph, I think these are some ones that I would at least consider regardless of price range that you're looking at. Was there a few that I missed? I know I probably did miss some, but love to see some comments down below. Any personal ownership stories of a watch that you would recommend for people that are looking at this genre of watch, uh, please leave a comment down there and I'm sure other people would appreciate it. What I would appreciate though, giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. It does help out the channel. I really would, again, appreciate it. And then also definitely check out teddyballastar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.